Well, here on the channel, we talked about how Capcom is going through their old catalog on Steam and adding Devono or other digital rights management softwares to their games, which stops it from being leaked or copyrighted. Now it looks like Capcom's going full on inclusivity and adding an entire group just for making sensitivity readers for their games. Well, Capcom goes full woke, reveals that its localization team has altered video games for cultural adaptation, preserving context and inclusive storytelling. Well, you know what this means. It means you need to subscribe to the channel because Capcom doing these sorts of things is absolutely ridiculous. So subscribe today and find out more of what's going on in the games industry right now. And now all of this hails from this tweet, Capcom localization team that they've put out. Embark on the global adventure through the lens of game localization via the mere transition. We're diving into the art of cultural adaptation, preserving context and inclusive storytelling. Join us as we unravel the in intricacies that make games resonate worldwide. So what I get out of this is that they're taking people's culture. They're going to subjugate it to a more Western ideal. Um, even though this is Jap Japanese company doing this and going to change it up. They're going to make sensitivity readers because cultural sensitivities in characters is part of this new localization team. We wouldn't be this channel, the Mark Curran count channel at this point without a tweet from Grums. Breaking, Capcom goes full woke in their localization changes, characters, gameplay, and more DEI. This is their Osaka-based localization team, which is full of Westerners in localization who are extremely left-leaning and control the narrative. How do I know? My insider scoop posts tomorrow. So there's more to come on this one, but he's highlighting here what is going on here. The lens game, the lens of game localization beyond mere translation. We're diving into the art of cultural adaptation, preserving context, inclusive storytelling, a character design and development must be culturally sensitive and addressing gender specific language, cultural norms and diverse perspectives. These are all things that have just completely rotted at the core of gaming right now. Even gameplay elements might need to make a little cultural remix. This is on the heels of where IGN was saying that Resident Evil 5, a remake of Resident Evil 5 needs to completely change uh, because it was based in South Africa and it put a, a poor light on the South African people. But the game in itself played for itself, sold thousands of copies and did quite well and now it needs to be changed and remake for things like this, for a sensitivity reader. Point out here, Capcom is not doing very well. When it comes to Twitter, Twitter is one sense of social media right now. They are not the end all be all. It's where the dollars are going, where the shareholders are looking at these things and what the investors are really doing. They generally don't see what happens on Twitter or social media in general. You got 262 people liking this post. You've got 1,300 replies to it along with 590 retweets of which I'm going to guess are not good retweets at this point. Um, savvy artist, uh, she's done a lot of work work talking about the DEI. What do you think other people can't handle different cultures or, or go look up nuanced words, phrases, customs, and foods? Why do you think others can't handle something different? If I play a game by Capcom, I expect a Japanese experience. Now we're going to get a Western experience through throughout the entire the of Capcom. On top of that, with the Devono and the digital rights management, their games are already subjected to a downfall of their games because it, it creates frame rate problems, it creates poor optimization problems. These Devono digital rights managements, they just add in bloatware. It's like when you open your new brand new laptop and it's been filled with nothing like uh, antiviruses and bloatware throughout, you now have to go through the whole thing to get rid of those things so you have a, a good optimized computer that actually can do things for you. It creates a absolute nightmare of a scenario. You can't enjoy the games because it just slows them right down. And now where we go into the cultural sensitivity readers, it's going to create a narrative 
that they need to push a message or a different agenda. Instead of being focused on making money like we see with Stellar Blade, where they just go out there and they're making a game that's going to be well received overall, I'm seeing a lot of the demos, I'm seeing a lot of statistics over it, and a lot of people are going to be playing that game where they can but it's a uh, PS5, so once again, it's going to be one of these scenarios. A lot of people are not going to be spending as much money on it over the PS5's price point right now. With Capcom here, they're everywhere. They are on Steam, they're on all systems, they're, but now they're pushing this localization under the guise that it will bring in more people into gaming. Well, you've got 3.3 billion people already playing in the gaming sphere. How many more people are you really going to bring in under that envelope? How many more people are going to suddenly pick up a game because you've gone and done the sensitivity reading for them? Because you need to spoon fed what mommy and daddy tells you. That's where this game and this company is going. This is where they're going to be heading. And that's mostly with the Western culture right now. The Japanese culture is fine. There's nothing wrong with it. And I sorely welcome that type of culture to it. But when it comes down to the Westernization of it, where it's gotta be completely removed and completely sensitive and completely toned down, no, that's not going to make games sell more. People want to play the games because of the Japanese culture behind it, because of the Japanese aspect that brought the games to their forefront in the first place. Not for this new idea that it's going to suddenly market a something more with a new message. It's just going to ruin the game in the long run. Overall, this is not a good thing when it comes to video games. A lot of people played the games because they were fun. Uh, look at Street Fighter in particular. Street Fighter 2 was one of the pinnacles of fighting games back when I grew up. I used to go to the local Don't Air shop, play Street Fighter 2 while waiting for them to make my food. But now it's going to be completely different. They, they got to make sure it's cult and culturally sensitive. They've got to remove things like E Honda's uh, Japanese Rising Sun out of the game because it was no longer a Western audience that they were placating to. It's absolutely pathetic to see overall. But where does this really leave? Where does this put gaming now? It, it just makes it an absolute slog fest and you don't wanna play these games anymore. Between the digital rights management software that's making them poorly optimized and now a, a storytelling that's not going to be the traditional style of storytelling and is more the modern audience, these more modernized things, makes it very, very dry. And there's nothing, there's no, value in it anymore it just makes everyone a general npc and you lose the actual value of the japanese culture in this a lot of people played these games the way that they were because they were fun enticing exciting and now it's going to be here's a message you're being bad you're a bigot where does it leave us it doesn't leave us anything good in the end Anyway, I've been your Proud King Phoenix Cinder Shadow. I'm signing off here. Let me know what your thoughts on this is down below, and I will catch you again very soon.